At dawn on the 21st of September 1920, the bodies of Seamus Lawless and Sean Gibbons were found dead at a corner where Key Street meets Bridge Street in Balbriggan. A plaque on the bridge in Balbriggan commemorates their deaths and reads, Near this spot, Seamus Lawless and Sean Gibbons were brutally done to death by British forces while in their custody on the 20th of September 1920. Their deaths were the result of an incident that had taken place on the evening of the 20th of September 1920. In what became known as the Sack of Balbriggan, the town of Balbriggan was attacked, looted and burned by a local RIC brigade consisting of the Auxiliaries and the Black and Tans. Balbriggan town is nestled on the east coast of Ireland, situated approximately 32 kilometres north of Dublin city. 100 years on from the events that took place in September 1920, the community have come together to commemorate the Sack of Balbriggan and their shared history. But this historical event cannot be examined in isolation. Throughout Ireland, 1920 was a year of reprisals on both sides of the political divide. The year started well for the political movement, winning seats on Oberon councils in Cork, Dublin and Limerick. Recognising the British were losing control of Munster, they decided to bring in the Restoration of Ireland Act in 1920. This led to reprisals from both sides and placed Munster under martial law. The year was further defined by some major events. In Dublin we had Bloody Sunday on the 21st of November, where 31 people were killed in hostilities by both sides. Here in Fingal there were a number of retaliations. In December, the Black and Tans raided, looted and burnt Cork. Their actions there were such as to horrify the nation to its very core. The year also saw the deaths of Thomas McCurtain and Terence McSweeney in Cork and the youthful Kevin Barry here in Dublin. But of course, that was just a follow on of what they had done here in Balbriggan in September. On the evening of the 20th of September 1920, two men entered Smith's pub, now known as the Millray's pub, they were Peter Burke, head constable in the RIC, and his brother William. There are several accounts about the details of what happened next, but following an argument, local Republican volunteers intervened and Peter Burke was shot dead and his brother William seriously injured. There are several accounts of what later transpired in the pub. The Draw the Independent reported that the Black and Tans arrived and that there was an argument between the two parties. Mrs Smith the landlady actually said that she tried to stop the singing in the premises. So what is certain is that there was an altercation, there were shots fired when the volunteers arrived in the pub, and that sometime later Peter Burke was dead. When word made it back to the camp in Gormanston that a police official had been killed, a large group consisting of RIC, auxiliaries and black and tans set out for the town of Balbriggan, arriving at about 11.45 p.m. Well, when the black and tans descended from the lorries, they headed obviously for Clenard Street, which was locally known as Sinn Féin Alley. There are some cottages there, which were the O'Neill cottages. They were set on fire. And indeed, other premises that would have been better type houses, strongly built houses, they were also set on fire. They generally went through on a rampage and to try and do as much destruction as they could. They proceeded then to born some of the major business premises in the town. Smith and Company were lucky enough to have survived, but the sea mills down on the seafront were not as fortunate. And those factories, I think one of them had 300 employed, and mostly these were women. So up to 30 or more residential buildings were burnt and looted. When we include the commercial buildings, it's up to about 50 buildings burnt, destroyed, looted. So some Republicans were taken in for questioning in the RIC barracks in Bridge Street, and amongst them, Seamus Lawless, a local barber, and Sean Gibbons, a dairy farmer. The following morning, the two men's bodies were discovered on Bridge Street. 
The bodies were moved to Keeling's yard, where an inquest later took place. It was found that the two men, Seamus Lawless and Sean Gibbons, had several deep lacerations, and their deaths were due to shock and haemorrhage following these wounds. Within days of the sack of Balbriggan, there was widespread publicity. This is really down to the fact that Balbriggan and the proximity to Dublin, where all of the journalists and photographers were based. Within days, very clear images spread out across the globe. There was fear and terror during that time in the days and afterwards. And that fear and terror remained in the minds of the people for days, weeks, months, and maybe years after. The silence continued. Emphasis was then given on rebuilding, getting going, and consideration and priority would have been given to the business people, particularly the factories, get employment going again. While the mothers were at home and hadn't got food for their children, until compensation eventually came true. There was great consternation from America. They wanted to make funds available and collect funds, but the, the, the human scare and terror of not being able to take over normal life again, because as I say, it was a scary time anyway during the Troubles. Today, Balbriggan is a thriving multicultural community with a population diversity not equaled in Ireland and the youngest population demographic in the country. With the centenary of the sack of Balbriggan occurring on the 21st of September 2020, the commemoration created an opportunity to give people an understanding of Balbriggan's heritage and a sense of pride of place. We started in 2019 to look at how we would uh, deliver a real meaningful commemoration for the sack of Balbriggan. And I think looking back over the last 100 years, Balbriggan, it's fair to say, has had many changes, um, both through uh, business and then through the cultural diversity and the young population that we have today. So it was very, very important that we captured the thoughts of as many groups as possible in order to make sure that we were speaking to everybody and understanding how they felt an event like this should be commemorated. In March of this year, COVID-19 struck and all plans for the commemoration had to be revised. In line with government health advice, it was decided to move the commemorations online. COVID-19 provided many challenges to the group, but we knew that we had to commemorate, remember and record this historic event in our town. We needed to show it to the community, but we also needed to provide a record for our future generations. It was great to see all of the groups that came together. We had to think outside the box. We had to get other ideas, but each of the groups came forward, even though their contribution might have changed. But I think their input will make this something that we can be proud of. From the 12th to the 19th of September, the commemorative group held a series of live talks and exhibitions. Among them was the Fingal Lighthouse Art Group. We are a local art group called Fingal Lighthouse Art Group and we've been established just little over a year now. And being a local art group, we wanted to get involved in the 100 year commemoration of the Sack of Balbriggan. We've been working hard to get our work out there in the public eye because we believe the more we get our work out there, the more members we will attract. And this can only be good for the community. We were delighted to get involved in this exhibition. We wanted to show the community a different view to the local history through art and art being open to interpretation. The local artists have worked incredibly hard to put this exhibition together. It's an amazing exhibition and we were honoured to get involved. Fingal Old IRA Commemorative Society 1916 to 1921 held an exhibition of their military uniforms and memorabilia. The Fingal Old IRA Welfare Society was founded to support those who had taken part in the rising and the subsequent events after 1916. As time moved forward and needs changed, the group became more commemorative, changing its name and focus. The Sack of Balbriggan commemoration offered an opportunity to exhibit our mobile museum which the group uses in collaboration in talks with the public and the parade party in full uniform which presents a commemorative events and occasions. 
Central to telling the story of the sack of Balbriggan and remembering the history of Balbriggan was the local historical society. This year, of course, is a monumentally important year for our society, as it is the centenary of the sack of Balbriggan. We are very aware that this is of enormous historical importance, both locally, nationally and indeed internationally. Of course, many events and plans have been affected seriously by the COVID-19 pandemic and no one could have anticipated or foreseen the dreadful impact that this has had on all of our lives. Instead, we've had to adapt and move forward with all of the new virtual technologies. However, we remain committed to commemorating this very, very important event. We produced the commemorative calendar at the end of last year, and this was a great success in great demand. And this was helped enormously by the quality of the photographic collection that was kindly donated to us by Jim Glennon. The photographs were from an album created in the 1920s by Joseph and Theresa McGowan. They were the owners of the Gladstone Inn and they were also Jim's grandparents. We have also produced a limited edition commemorative medal and on one side it depicts the utter devastation of Clannard Street scene and on the other side the Balbriggan Town Crest. Balbriggan has many stories to tell and the sack of Balbriggan is one of those. From a tourism perspective, the commemoration gives us an opportunity to showcase Balbriggan and celebrate a lot of elements that exist. We also have a heritage trail in Balbriggan which starts at St Peter and Paul's Catholic Church. Within we have two magnificent pieces of stained glass window by the famous Harry Clark. We have many buildings on Railway Street which was home to Balbriggan's hosier industry, Smith & Company. Railway Street also captured the imagination of the famous artist L.S. Lowry, a sketch of children playing on the street. A replica of the sketch can be seen, along with other black and white images, of scenes that depict the workings of Smith & Company and the hosier industry that once was in Balbriggan. If you look at a town like Balbriggan, it has two castles, one to the south, Ardgillen, and one sitting on the north, Bremore Castle, which probably is the biggest tourism potential for the North County and the Balbriggan area, both as an economic driver and a place for people to meet and have uh, localised events. So we're actually looking forward to the castle becoming a real tourism entity in, in Balbriggan in the very near future. We also have a uh, crescent-shaped beach, magnificent harbour, working harbour, which has lots of interest and value to people who would come to visit Balbriggan. In addition to the art exhibition, representatives of the town's historical society came together with a range of councillors, community stakeholders and Fingold's art office to develop a brief for a new mural for the centenary year, which would be centrally located on Bridge Street. Taking inspiration from archive photography of the aftermath of the event, which featured the extent of the damage to buildings of the town, vibrant silhouettes were set against the beaming light of the Balbriggan Lighthouse to symbolise the town's historical past alongside its bright future. As Mayor of Fingal, I'm honoured to support this documentary, commemorating the events of the 20th of September 1920 in Balbriggan. Balbriggan today is a thriving town, but its current situation is a testament to its resilience. Nonetheless, it is important that we look back and remember and commemorate the events of the sack of Balbriggan. A lot of work has gone into planning a full programme of remembrance of the events of the 20th of September 1920, but unfortunately this has had to be scaled back due to the public health priorities. I would like to thank all of the local groups in Balbriggan who partnered with Fingal County Council in making these plans for the commemoration. I hope you find this documentary thought-provoking and a suitable commemoration of the people of Balbriggan and what they experienced on the 20th of September 1920. The centenary anniversary offers each of us a time to reflect upon our past and to consider our future. It provides us with an opportunity to remember those who went before and to consider our responsibilities to those that will follow. Whilst this film replaces planned commemorative ceremonies which due to Covid restrictions could not proceed, it succeeds in creating a lasting memory for all time. The film piece is a rich medley of history, imagery and music. It offers a montage of memories from the community of Balbriggan and Fingal. The culmination of these commemorations was to be a wreath-laying ceremony by the President of Ireland, Michael D. Higgins, in Balbriggan Church, with a limited number of guests. However, due to COVID-19 restrictions, this couldn't go ahead. 
Despite these setbacks and the challenging nature of organising these celebrations, the community of Balbriggan have worked together to overcome these difficulties to mark the sack of Balbriggan. The community events and this film have created a lasting memory of the commemoration, not just for the community of Balbriggan, but for the whole of Fingal. Thank you.